Imagine you were attending a concert. You're probably ready to just relax, listen, and have a good time. But unbeknownst to you, the music being performed isn't quite what you expected. Regardless, being the courteous person that you are, you restrain yourself and decide to just keep listening. But the music grows increasingly bizarre and shocking. You feel yourself starting to lose your cool until eventually a song so outlandish causes you, as well as the rest of the audience, to erupt into a full-fledged tantrum. Chaos ensues, the musicians leave the stage, and the lights have to be turned off in order to disperse the throng. The next day, journalists dub this event Skandal Concert, German for Scandal Concert. And this so-called Scandal Concert is precisely what happened in Vienna more than a century ago. The actual Scandal Concert took place in the Great Hall of the prestigious Musik Verein on March 31st, 1913. The set list included a chamber symphony by the expressionist composer Arnold Schoenberg, six songs composed by his brother-in-law Alexander von Zemlinski, two pieces by his pupils Anton Webern and Albert Berg, and a song cycle by Gustav Mahler. The majority of the music was expressionist and experimental, which didn't quite sit well with the ears of Viennese concertgoers at the time. Thus, the concert never even made it to the performance of Mahler's Kinder Toten Lieder, as it was after the third song in Berg's orchestral composition when the audience finally lost all manners of etiquette. What started out as subdued murmuring and hissing had evolved into jeering and raucous laughter. The disruption was so great that the concert organizer Erhard Buschbeck stepped on stage in an attempt to calm the crowd so that the concert could continue. This failed disastrously as a certain individual in the audience allegedly called Buschbeck a lausbub, at which point Buschbeck decided that the best course of action was to jump into the crowd and slap the offending concertgoer in the face. This eventually led to a lawsuit where Buschbeck was fined for assault and the concertgoer for defamation. It was even reported that the composer Oscar Strauss, who was a witness to the alleged assault, testified in court that the slap had been the most harmonious sound of the evening, given the avant-garde nature of Scano Concert's music. In a later interview with Arnold Schoenberg, the composer condemned the audience's reaction, accusing them of two crimes. First, of having disrupted the piece by making noise in a concert hall, and second, of having destroyed Bushbeck's property as he believed that the concert itself was proprietary to the concert organizer. The first accusation is rather ironic, as some experimental pieces of the later half of the 20th century actually incorporate noises made by the audience as part of the music such as in John Cage's 433. Anyway, the truth is, the music performed that day was so controversial, it was enough to rile up the audience into a fracas. But was it really just the power of expressionism that enabled this transgression, or was it the stubborn mindset and inability to accept anything beyond the norm that drove the Viennese concertgoers into madness? Schoenberg was no stranger to his music suffering vehement rejection, and there had already been violent reactions to modern music in the past. As a matter of fact, Berg subsequently withdrew the composition that had provoked such an negative reaction, and it wasn't until four decades later that this piece was finally published. Perhaps the events of Scandal Concert are merely a display of the extreme conservatism of the Viennese audience at the time, and perhaps Scandal Concert was a necessary milestone for the advancement of avant-garde music. Regardless, composers continued to push the boundaries of experimental music, in spite of what happened during Scandal Concert. And by no means was Scandal Concert the last of the scandalous concerts. Less than two months later, a supposed riot broke out during the premiere of Igor Stravinsky's The Rite of Spring though newer research shows that this was more of a myth, as no incidents have been corroborated other than some whistling, catcalling, and laughing. Surprisingly, the premiere of The Rite of Spring is more well known today than Scandal Concert, despite the former being more groundbreaking than it was outrageous, while the latter actually required police intervention. Of course, rioting during concerts is nothing new, with examples ranging from unruly behavior at the Royal Opera House in the 1700s to looting and violence at the 1999 Woodstock Music Festival. In the grand scheme of recurring concert riots, Scandal Concert is merely a speck. History truly does repeat itself, 